What's up guys, Super Dark Lord on the channel. So this is actually my pull list video from this past Wednesday. So I'll start off with DC. Uh, so I got Superman Action Cox number 1003. Can even Batman save the Man of Steel? I just love this cover by Patrick Gleason. I think he's a great artist. Looks like Paquette did the art on the inside, but it's all right. I, uh, I was actually just reading this these two today, Action Cox 1001 and the uh, Action Comics special. So that was really fun. So I was like, you know what, this is so good. Another Patrick Gleason cover here. This was so good that I I haven't even read this one yet, but I picked this one up today so that I could uh, catch up. That's how good uh, 1001 was. So let me know if you guys want me to review that. I probably will review that. Doomsday Clock, I got both covers, the Green Lantern and the uh, Rorschach cover. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I actually want to hurry up and do this video so I can read that and probably review it, depending on how good it is. I really like this series. Some people complain about it or don't like that it's bi-monthly. I don't care. I like every time it comes out. I'm like, yes, I want to read this from start to finish. It's always good. Gary Frank is amazing. Jeff Johns is the best DC writer, period. With Batman Detective Comics, obviously, I love any cover with Two-Face. I feel like Two-Face has been kind of a rare, a more rare villain um, lately. I'm not sure why, but... So it looks like Batman has become Batman face, Two-Face Batman, so we'll see what happens in that. I didn't see a variant cover for this, but I uh, I like this cover, so it's very classic comic booky style. So Batman Kings of Fear, another one I was just reading. Uh, I did a review for this. I'm not sure if I uploaded it or not, but yeah, look out for this review. I'm, I'll probably upload it soon. Um, but yeah, I was just reading that right before work the other day. And I loved it. The art was so weird and crazy, but Kelly Jones is great. And I guess he was just at my local comic shop by my parents' house, and I had missed him. And I was like, dang, I could have gotten to meet him and got stuff signed. But anyways, uh, Batman Kings of Fear number two. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure this will be a fun Scarecrow issue. It's definitely like uh, hypnotic, trip, psychedelic style Batman, like almost like 80s style. Um, and then obviously I had to pick up Heroes in Crisis. Today was a really heavy day. That's why this freaking pull list video is taking so long. Uh, Heroes in Crisis number one. Yeah, and some weird stuff happened at the comic book shop. I like freaking, ugh, I'll get into that later. Uh, I had to get this regular cover because I feel like this is one of the last times you'll see, this is definitely a comic skate thing. One of the last times you'll see women actually look feminine. Um, I feel like DC might go more towards the Marvel route. Uh, the more time passes by where they are doing more SJW books and SJW artists and stuff like that. So I feel like even just how feminine and sexual Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn and Barda look on this, I feel like that's that's not going to happen on a cover or a big, a big definitely not a big story line or a big book or a big series in DC very, very much longer. That's my prediction, but... Obviously, I, I hope, prove me wrong. That's like kind of like we Comicsgate, we want us, to, we want to be proven wrong. Like the way you kill Comicsgate is by writing better comics. So if they keep on drawing women sexy and like looking like women in comic books, then Comicsgate has no reason to exist. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to read that. Looks good. Uh, Justice League Dark number three. So yeah, I every time I pick pick this up I get the Greg Capullo cover uh, I read the first two issues right when they came out loved it, it was super fun uh, can't say no to the Greg Capullo cover what are you doing crypto what are you doing he was catching a fly earlier why wouldn't it focus uh, anyways so um, I'm already stretching anyways Justice League Dark is great sorry I'm distracted um, it's been a long day guys I, I went to two different comic book shops spent a lot of money and um, <clears throat> Anyways, so I got Justice League Odyssey number one, the variant cover, Terry Dodson. Uh, yeah, can't go wrong with this. I feel like this is like a Star Trek slash Star Wars version of Justice League. Um, looks really good, honestly. Like, I, I, at first I thought it looked weird, um, but then I thought it looked really, really good just because you don't see stuff like this anymore. Um, or coming from DC, this is kind of like a more Marvel uh, type of book. So we'll see if this is any good. I love Terry Dodson's art. The women look like women. The men look like men. Dark Side looks pretty... I like the way Dark Side looks in this cover better than the other cover. So, um... Sorry, I keep getting distracted because Crypto's like walking around. He usually just stays in one spot. Um... So yeah, I hope that's good. We'll see. 
And then I already showed you that Batman in Action Comics. I also got the new Flash because it's a part one, uh, number 55. And I love Scott Collins, his artwork's great. And the, the cover is a variant, I believe. Oh, it's not John Boy Myers, it's a different guy. I forget his name, but it's a great cover. I love, I love like water and the ocean and the waves and I've always loved Flash. My dad painted a giant Flash symbol on my wall. Uh, oh, this is John Boy Myers. He did Spawn Resurrection. Um, but yeah, my dad painted a giant flash symbol on my wall when I was like in junior high. So that's all the DC stuff. Now let's get into uh, independent and then last I'll do Marvel. So <clears throat> they shorted me on the DC previews book, but I got the Marvel previews. Sometimes I review these and I just kind of roast it and I upload like a 10 minute video just roasting it. So sometimes there's good stuff in here, but most, most of the time it's just cringeworthy Marvel SJW crap. So that's fun to roast. So I might do a video on that. Uh, this is just comic shop news. I don't ever review that, but I don't know if anybody wants that to be reviewed. Comment. Uh, independent books. I got Vampirilla and Deja Thoris, number one. Uh, I got cover D. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. It's like Zeus, Jusco? Joe Jusco? Something like that. Uh, yeah, I just really like these two characters. So the art artwork on the inside looked pretty good. So we'll see how it is. And there's like a dead monster behind them. I thought that was savage. Um, uh, and then this is a recommend from Diversity in Comics, another comics gate, move the needle thing. Wow, is this, why am I shirt wet? Is this from Crypto? Uh, this is another move the needle comics gate type comic book. That's, that's why I bought this. I, I wouldn't have bought it if Diversity in Comics didn't recommend it. So that's how much I trust him and his opinion. Uh, you should go watch his videos. I'm not going to like shill for him, but his videos speak for themselves. So, The Wrong Earth, I'll check it out. I, I love this cover. I, I was going to buy, I picked this, this is one of those comics that I went and picked it up and read it and flipped through it and I put it back. And then went, picked it up, flipped through it again, looked at the back cover, put it back. Did this like two or three times. So today, it was the last copy there and I was like, you know what, screw it. I'll read it, do a review on it and call it a move the needle or comic skate book and I'll, I'll give my opinion on it. So I might not feel the same way as Diversity in Comics, but I did pick it up because he recommended it. So those are the two independent comics I got today. All right, last but not least, let's do Marvel. Here we go. So I got Return of Wolverine, the original Wolverine variant. Um, so it's weird because I get a discount at the comic book stores I go to because I have a pull list. But for some reason they didn't discount this one and I'm wondering it's because if they priced it here, but that's how much the regular book is. So why would they put a different price or a price tag that says 499 when they usually don't even put, I don't know, it's weird. So anyway, I don't know if this is good. I just wanted to read it because I like, I was looking for a variant cover and I saw that all the variant covers sold out and this is the last one. And at the other store, they didn't have any at all. So I was like, wow, this is the last one. It's the same price as regular cover price. And it's got the OG first appearance Wolverine on it. So yeah, I the art inside looked pretty good. Steve McNiven, uh, same as the cover. Uh, Charles Soule, the writer, I, all I know is he writes really boring Daredevil books and good Darth Vader books. So yeah, we'll see if that's any good. Um, I guess some of his Daredevil's okay. I just, some of it is kind of boring. But yeah, the, the Darth Vader books I've seen him read, or I mean, that I've read that he's written were pretty good. So Edge of spider Again, this one, <laughs> I went back and forth about this. I got a bunch of Marvel books. I don't usually buy Marvel at all, but... I got the Edge of spider Get in number one with like the punk rock Spider-Man. I got the Coley Hamner variant. I loved it. Uh, two and three were kind of, eh, didn't look that great. Uh, Flip through them. And then this one, and I saw this cover caught me. It was like, meet the mysterious Spider-Man who changes the course of spider Get in. And look at that cover. Like it was sold out at one store. So I found it at another store and I picked it up and I flipped through it and it looks pretty weird, but I'm really intrigued by the story and by the mysteriousness behind it. So it did not look as boring or as SJW -E as uh, issues two and three. But issue number one was good. It was like a punk rock Spider-Man. This one has a punk rock Spider-Man in it. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, two and three were really random. They were like, it was like a little kid and a little girl on one and then like a little kid version of Peter and like, I don't know, it was weird. Uh, spider getting number zero, had to pick this up obviously because the first appearance of the PS4 Spider-Man. I believe, I don't know if he's showed up before this, but it does say the star of Spider-Man makes his comic book debut. So 
PS4 Spider-Man. Can't, can't not pick that up. I really want to get a PS4 just for that, that video game. Um, ben Riley, The Scarlet Spider. Well, I mean, I guess there is a few other cool PS4 games like Spyro and, um, I don't know, Call of Duty. But Scarlet Spider number 24. Uh, yeah, I love reading this comic and they finally, I waited out. I kept reading because I like the story by Peter David. I didn't like the old, I think it's by Peter David. I didn't like the old artist, Will Sliney or something, but they finally switched it to a different artist. So I'm really excited to read this. I have been buying this just for the story and for the covers. I did not like the artwork on the inside. Um, so finally they switched the artist. So I'm, I'm really excited to read Scarlet Spider. I love, I love the character Ben Riley Scarlet Spider with like the hoodie. Uh, and this new Scarlet Spider, I think it's Kane, like the other clone of Spider-Man. Uh, he's cool. Um, so, Amazing Spider-Man. This is like a reprint. It's uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a reprint. It should say on here, right? Yeah, it says covered by Gabrielle De Auto. So, I'm, this is either, they either got shorted and they got more of it, or it's a reprint. I'm not sure. But, Gabrielle De Auto did like the Secret War covers from like the early 2000s or something. Uh, so I really like his artwork a lot, and I, I did flip through this a while ago, and I wanted to pick up the book, but it was a different cover, and so I didn't buy it because uh, that cover was kind of boring. But now that there's a cool cover for it, I picked it up. It uh, looks like, I know it's Saladin Ahmed, I think he did Black Bolt, which was actually decent, but I just didn't like the art on it that much. So I thought, hey, the art looked cool in the, in the Spider-Man, even though the Black Bolt didn't, the art wasn't good. But Black Bolt's writing was okay, so this writing must be okay too. So, I know, I think he's probably SJW writer, but I don't know. He was he was okay on Black Bolt, so I'll give him another shot on this. Uh, Venom First Host, I just finished reading this. This is the only comic I've read today um, from the new stack, from the new comic book stack, and it was great. Highly recommend all of these. I'm going to go back and buy the other covers, so I'll have like three variants and like four five of the, the A covers. That's how much I like this. I haven't actually been buying doubles except for that Doomsday Clock. Um, but yeah, I did. I, I want to go buy the doubles for this. That's how much I liked it. So go read all, all five issues of Venom First Host. That was a massive pull list. Uh, let me know if I missed anything or let me know what you guys got because I'm really interested to see if I missed any like independent books or maybe some DC books. But thanks for watching guys. Okay, bye.